Hello and welcome back to my garden. My name is Natalie from Living the Dream Permaculture and today I'm going to film another garden with me. We've had a week straight of insane rain. I've had about 80 mils in the garden. Things have exploded, not just the plants but the weeds. And I thought that what better day than to come in here and to show you how I'm going to try and control this wild mess in this week's episode of Garden With Me. We're about to get a week's worth of um, really warm temperatures. So um, low to mid 30s um, Celsius, which I think is about 80, 90 Fahrenheit. I'm not entirely sure. I'll figure that out and leave it down here. Um, so the ground is absolutely saturated and with that sunshine and the warmth and the moisture and all that beautiful hot compost that I put on my garden, things are going to go even more crazy. So let's try and get this under control um, before this week of heat. I have a few jobs that I need to do and one of them is to clean out this disaster that I've ignored over the last month or two um, because I need to get ready to start sowing all my brassicas for autumn and winter and I want to do that later today when it gets much hotter and I can't be out working in the garden. So this space needs to be cleared of all the blackberries and all the weeds underneath. And I've also noticed some of the turmeric that I planted last year is sprouting back. So um, I want to clear all this out from the weeds so it has a good chance to grow. <laughs> Look at that pile of weeds that just came out of the hothouse. That's not all of it, but that's going to go in the weed compost area where I let it break down and then pop it onto my depleted beds. It's looking so lovely and full in here. Makes me very, very happy to see the garden this lush. And this is just a small portion of it. It's certainly looking much, much better. Opening the other door pull out some of these crazy weeds that have grown through. Be shelving you up. All that perennial grass that's going to reseed in here. <laughs> but that's alright. We just needed to be able to walk in here because I couldn't and I had no shelving space clear. So this is some of my save pile and that all needs to go out and some of these need to go out too. These trays need to go out. And then I've got some space for my brassicas. Rexy's helping us. What have you found, Rex? What have you found? Hey. So good. It's not perfect, but it's much better. So all that's clear. Most of the weeds are out and some of the turmeric's popping up. There's a few more popping up down this end. This is all clear, this space is all clear, and let's go take out one more of those trays and we are done the last of the weeds down there. So this here is a Jabba de Kaba. I've spoken about it before, it is a tropical plant but it thrives in my hothouse. So when we put in the second polytunnel, they even plant this in the ground and keep it pruned. But this is basically like a tropical grape, it grows fruit on the... On the um, on the <laughs> stalk trunk stem thing <laughs> um, and so I don't know if we'll ever fruit here but it's pretty cool that it's thriving because when we got it it was only about this big so from my hand up it was only a tiny little thing but I've had it for about a year now and it's you know grown four times its size this here is leaf cardamom it was um, sold to me as ginger um, and I fell for it. But <laughs> basically a useless plant. But I'm keeping it in here anyway. I've got another pot of that which I might bring in too. Next thing I wanted to do was stake up some of my dahlias that were leaning over with the weight. They're only going to become heavier with flowers so I'm going to stake them now just to stop them from breaking. Paul's cleaning up some of the rogue blackberries there while I tie up these dahlias that are flopping over. So these ones are being tied up and I just need to tie these ones up a bit more. I, um, I'm running out of stakes. So I've raided the kids cubby house but 
I'm also running out of spare sticks. So I think I'm just going to tie it back to the trellis maybe if I can't find any more sticks. I'm pretty happy the fever few is starting to open up and these beautiful Love Lies Bleeding Amaranths. Aren't they gorgeous? Apparently you can pop the seeds like popcorn, which I might give a go because I've got quite a few. I've got a different variety here um, that you use for the leaves. Apparently you can eat the seeds of this one too, so I'll just do a bit more research. But I grew it for the flower because it's just so beautiful. And in true permaculture style, I had this uh, clothes area that's broken so I fixed it up and I'm going to use this to um, stake my dahlias to because I've run out of sticks who would have thought so that's all the dahlias tied up which makes this space much more functional so all this green stuff that's asparagus fronds that's going to seed um, these are seedling um, asparagus so we're not harvesting any for this year and next year and then we can harvest in 2023 uh, because I sowed them from seed last year um, and I also want to say that it's really important to deadhead your dahlias which is pulling off the spent flowers this encourages more blooms which is better for you and the bees and by tying these up I've noticed that two more are starting to shoot so these two got annihilated by slugs and snails actually a third one there too and um, they got annihilated by slugs and snails when these ones were taking off and I wasn't sure if they would continue to grow but they have which is awesome so they can be tied up here I did plant them too close together but um, anyway that's just the way it is I'll change that next season but how happy are these blooms so much fun in the garden be enjoying the Chinese broccoli flowers This area continues to grow like crazy and the white gladioles were the ones I couldn't pull out or were hiding um, and it's the only spot that they stayed. I moved my gladioles all the way down here and I got my pinks and purples down there and I don't know if the white bulbs were smaller or what but all the white ones stayed here and they look really beautiful against all the herbs back there. You can see how full this area is and it's, I feel like it's just exploded after all that rain um, compared to last week. So let's go down here and tidy it up a bit. So I think the main thing I'm going to do in this garden today is weed and have another go at tying up the cucumbers. I don't think we're going to stake any tomatoes today but it does need to get done this week um, so it just might be a during the week job not a full gardening day job um, but I just keep helping the cucumbers climb up that trellis so they don't sprawl along the ground. I just use whatever twine I've got. I've got baling twine here but I might go and get my wool um, that way it can break down at the end of the season. So the cucumbers are all tied up now. These ones along the end are starting to climb by themselves and I have a set of couple of cucumbers as well. Paul's been doing some weeding. It's looking good in this pocket. I love this area. So the pathway is still very overgrown. We haven't got there yet. But the garden beds, they're overgrown in a good way. Oh, that colour from the rainbow silver beet. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Bringing in pops of beautiful colour. Back there, the yakon and uh, Jerusalem artichokes are covering that fence. The tomatoes are stacked. They're a bush variety, so I don't need to stake them. And then the alpine strawberries in front of it. It's a nice little system there. Let's go a bit closer. So you can see how well this is working. Everything's got enough space to grow. But it looks really nice. 
those are Thai pink eggs so um, they're like a really light red pinky kind of color very abundant so they will look awesome here against the yakon got some dahlias and gladiolis at the end the abundant alpine strawberries and then on this side I have Jerusalem artichokes I've got hollyhock there tomatillo eggplants and capsicums and chilies and in here there's a dianthus in my shadow there's some snapdragons underneath the um, tomatillos so there's a lot of biodiversity in here there's um calendula and then sorrel up there red vein sorrel the tromboncino um this is wild oregano and some perennial basil there so there's a lot happening here in this small area and it's very abundant and very productive the geese are now up in that kaikuyu bank hopefully they will get it down for us each goose needs about an acre so technically it shouldn't take long for them to eat that down and we fenced them off from the canna lilies that we planted last week which I don't know if you can see through the grass but they're growing nicely all that runner grass that Paul's pulling out so much fun this is another nice little diverse area we've got calendula I'll point with my scissors got calendula there I've got lemon balm I've got fish mint fever few fennel silver beet that is a purple um, ruffled basil I've got another basil down here which is flowering that one is fino verde ver verde verde well I don't know whatever um, <laughs> tomatoes and um, alpine strawberries and in behind there there's some lemongrass and then I've got a heap more flowers in through here there's marigolds dahlias something else I think that's yarrow um, there is a small zucchini there and then it kind of just keeps going with lots of different things and then my tomato patch so nice bit of diversity in the garden I just harvested a little basket of zucchinis and now I'm going to go into this patch and I'm going to harvest some of the onions that have fallen down. So most of them are still standing which means that um, they're not ready to harvest yet. The ones that have fallen over like these ones here and those ones there means that they're ready to come out which means I have some extra room to play with. size onions and I saw a monster one right at the back there which I can't wait to harvest and weigh. So that was a small harvest of onions there's still plenty more in the patch but look at the size of some of these onions amazing really really happy with that this variety is cream gold they are really good storage onions which is why I grew them um, this one's feeling a little bit soft so I'm going to pull it aside so I can use it first um, next year I'm only growing um, the cream golds. I've got the Balotta pickling onions um, so they'll go into pickles obviously and spring onions so they're the three types of onions I'm growing next season which is much the same as what I'm doing now except I don't have the Balotta um, pickling onions I do have some spring onions I've got a red variety and a white variety I can't remember the names um, but let's go have a look and see um, all the other onions that I've still got left in the garden that are standing upright that can't be harvested yet but I envision by the end of this week after a week of 30 something degrees I figure that they'll probably be ready to be harvested by then which means much more room to plant some more seeds in here I want to plant carrots and um, 
beetroot and Chinese broccoli. I think that's everything that I want to plant. Maybe some radishes. They don't take up much room. But let's go have a look now. So there's a heap of onions on this side and a heap of onions on this side. So there's long things that look like grass. They're not grass, they're onions. And I've got some that are really good sizes already. Um, have a look in here. Some good size onions. There's more back here. Nice size onions. Really nice size onions. So. Look at this one. That's huge. Really big. So kids are in bed and Paul is prepping. Where are we? Prepping to cut hay for tomorrow. I don't know if you can see the tractor there. Um, it's hopefully finally drying out. We've had all this rain, which has been wonderful. The paddocks are lovely and green, but we really need to get hay cut because it's vital for not only our animals and the animals bedding, but also for making compost. And I'm going to use it as mulch this year. I usually recommend not using it as mulch, but um, because I've been spending so much money on straw, about $400 to mulch our area which is a bit when you're trying to be self-sufficient and you know garden for free so I'm going to experiment with using hay and I'm going to use oh can you see it over here there's a chicken tractor maybe oh can't get my finger right <laughs> there's a little bit of a triangle hut there you've probably seen it in my paddock before because it's been sitting there for a while um, because we moved the chickens out of the veggie patch a while ago Anyway, I'm going to move that back in after summer and I'm going to pop in a bale of hay at a time. I'm going to let the chicken scratch it and forage for all the seeds, um, poop in it and all that sort of stuff. And then I'm going to use that as um, mulch. So hopefully that works. Um, I don't see why it shouldn't. Um, we've also had to stop free ranging our chooks because we've had a fox come. We've had something come for a while and pick off a bird at a time so I think it's been a hawk or an eagle or a wild cat or maybe even wild dogs um, and then just before Christmas we had a fox come we actually saw the fox and then we had like nine birds go at once and so we're keeping the birds locked up at the moment which is less than ideal for us so uh, we want to get them out free-ranging kind of free-ranging safely and so we're going to have the chicken tractor which we can move around um to keep them nice and safe from the fox because we've had lots of foxes they've exploded in numbers the other day when we we're driving home we saw five which is a lot usually we see none um so they're very active anyway we'll get the chickens in the veggie patch scratching around doing all the things that they love to do but safely and confined now i'm going to go plant some seeds since the kids are in bed so let's quickly do that before i lose daylight so this is where I harvested those onions from. I'm going to clear out the weeds and I'm going to plant some carrots here so I can have a succession crop. So I moved all the mulch back and I'm left with this beautiful soil. Hopefully it's not too rich for the carrots. And I'm going to make drills with my hands just like that. And this is where I'm going to plant my carrot seeds in. And then I'm going to sprinkle my carrot seeds in. So now they're all sprinkled in, I'm just going to cover them over. And cover them with this hessian sack. This just keeps the moisture in, especially through the heat wave that we're going to get. And then I'm going to give it a nice water. The soil is lovely and wet, but I want the hessian bags to stay wet too. Lastly, I want to sow these seeds, but I'm going to be a little bit lazy because I don't feel like making up my usual potty mix. I'm just going to refresh some old potty mix that um, I found in the hot house when I cleared it out. Um, that I found in the hot house when I cleared it out. So here's that potty mix. It's got some perlite in it from 
previous batches that I made up, but it's looking a little bit heavy. I've added in some coconut quail, which I'm going to give a bit of a water. And some of my finished compost. So there you go, this is the finished product. It holds together nicely, spongy, holds moisture. There's some worms in there from the compost, but that should grow nicely. So I've chosen my seeds. I'm sowing some Brussels sprouts. These are the green ones, golden acre cabbage, purple cauliflower, green cauliflower, um, I don't know the variety of broccoli this is, but this is a heading one. I know it's a green sprouting one. We'll put that one away, hey? Cauliflower, Chinese cabbage, Romanesco broccoli. There we have it, all the seeds sown. I'm going to pop this in the hothouse, which is going to remain open over this week. I might... Actually, I'm not going to. The soil's nice and moist. I was going to give it a quick water, but... It feels nice and damp. I'll water it tomorrow morning. There we go. So that was today's gardening jobs done. I hope you enjoyed gardening with me today. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time on Living the Dream Permaculture. Goodbye.